Hello and welcome to a video tutorial in which we will build a small diorama. The theme for the diorama is a chalk stone cliff wall with a waterfall and below a riverbed where the water has cut its way through the forest, creating a water stream leaving only rocks and roots in its way. I made this diorama to enter the competition I found on a website called Model Natur. If you like competitions, I put a link up in the right hand corner so you can check that out. The base material in this diorama will consist from 50mm styrofoam. One will be the base board and two will make up the height of the cliff. Cutting styrofoam is really easy if you have a styrofoam cutter. I've built my own, this is uh, three pieces of wood, two screws and two decimeter of cantal wire. I power it with five amps from a car battery charger. So, first piece done, I glue this in place using a PVA glue, that's wood glue or cola blanca if you're in a Spanish spoken area. And I put it in place like this. And the next one. Put some weights on this and let it dry overnight. Once dry I draw the contours of the mountain and the riverbed, so I know where to cut. I'm forming the cantal wire to the desired shape in order to cut the riverbed. At this point I thought that the mountain was a bit too tall and the riverbed a bit too shallow. So I'm adding also 60mm styrofoam pieces on each side of the riverbed. The competition on Model Nature is about using wrinkle rock or Knitterfelsen as they're also called. And then post a photo. 60301, 02 and 03 had the perfect chal cliff color I was looking for. I cut away the white borders and then wrinkle the paper until it's just a really wrinkly ball. Gently expand it again and try it in place on your diorama. Cut away excess pieces if necessary. It is then glued in place using wood glue or any water based scenic glue you have available. Fix the wrinkle rock to the styrofoam using pins until the glue has cured. I needed two sheets to complete this diorama. The important thing when joining two sheets is to make the edge unregular following the pattern in the wrinkle rock. Leave it to dry for a few hours. Then it's time for plastering. The plaster will cover all of the ground surfaces, meaning the riverbed and the top of the mountain. I'm using this concrete based plaster, which is slightly corrosive, so then it's a good idea to have plastic gloves. A range of different plasters can be used for this work. Make sure to select one which does not crack or shrink. This plaster is called Husfix. I found it in my DIY shop and the intention with it is to fill larger holes in concrete walls. After about 10 minutes I can use a brush and flatten the surface in this concrete based plaster so there is no need for additional plastering. After about 20 minutes I sprinkle randomly stones into the plaster in the riverbed and these can be pushed into the plaster looking like they have been sitting there for a long time. With that done I leave this to dry overnight. 
Then it's time to paint. I paint the ground surfaces in brown using raw umber. The difference between raw umber and burnt umber is that the raw umber does not contain so much red content. Raw umber is more naturally brown, which I think is to be preferred in combination with chalkstone like this. For the riverbed, I'm mixing the raw umber with yellow and wood glue plus a lot of water to get it really thin to float over the entire surface. For the center of the riverbed, in between the rocks, I also mix a portion of black. This will make it look like the riverbed is more deep in those areas. Leave that to dry and then add spots and areas of grass glue. Sprinkle in a range of different colored green turf. This will simulate green vegetation on the bottom of the water stream. I use a wide round flat brush to push that green turf into the glue. The dirt texture on the riverbank is achieved by sprinkling on brown grout through a nylon sock. Next is to dry brush a light brown color onto the stones in the riverbed. The purpose with this exercise is to enhance the contour in the surface of the stones. By doing this they will be clearly visible through the layers of water. That is also our last action on the riverbed. Now let's focus on the surroundings. I'm applying static grass glue and in that sprinkle woodland scenic earth blend and then spots of green blend. I then push it into the glue using the same flat round wide brush. With the turf in place, I start adding grass. For this diorama, I use a 12 mm grass tufts in color light green and beige. I glue them in place using scenic glue. With the tufts in place, I mark the position of the trees I will have later. To mark the position of the trees makes it much easier to prepare the ground underneath the trees. Next thing now is to apply static grass glue in all of the areas where I want my 6mm grass. I'm using the fine sieve on the static grass applicator and applicating quite richly, about 80% in the glued areas. I refill the applicator with beige 6mm and make another pass mainly along the edges of the glued areas. These are root pieces from a raspberry plant. I found these to be very useful for making trees and vegetation. All you need to do is to spray them with spray glue and then apply a layer of 6 or 12 mm brown static grass. The more dense the static grass layer is, the more dense the foliage will be. Let this dry now for a few minutes, then apply another layer of spray glue and then sprinkle in noch leaves. These are middle green leaves. I think these trees are a perfect match for mountain vegetation as well as swamp and fantasy dioramas. I also glue some of those root parts into the riverbed. This raspberry root can also be used as fallen trees. Last action for the terrain is to add some bushes. Those are added made from foliage of different kind to give some variance into the vegetation. All right, I think we're ready to pour in the water in the river or the two component epoxy. So I'm putting tape into the two ends of the riverbed. Now this two component water clear epoxy has a real tendency to creep through small holes and along the wall so you have to glue the edges to seal it properly. For this project I use glass cast. It's a two component water clear epoxy. With this epoxy you can fill up to 9mm per layer. 
The price for this product is much better than buying the small bottles in the hobby shop intended for model railroad. The smaller bottles are okay for a smaller project, but this diorama required about 2 deciliters. And as always when mixing epoxy, measure the two components as accurately as possible and mix thoroughly at least for 2 minutes. This epoxy required about 40 minutes before pouring, to avoid climbing around the edges and along objects. Once poured, air bubbles can be removed using a gas burner. Use the burner with great care so you don't burn your vegetation though. Here I am removing the bubbles in the first layer. Let's now make the water pillars. For this I use the Noch 60872 water effect. I measured the height of the waterfall and added about 5mm in each end. It all summed up to 130mm. I squeeze out a number of strips, so I later have a selection to choose from. Once dry I add another layer, a thin layer on top. And with my finger adding a wavy surface pattern which later will be highlighted using white dry brushing. To highlight the surface structure of the water pillars, I dry brush using a white acrylic paint. This one from Vallejo. After 24 hours we can safely remove the tapes. And start the assembly of the water pillars. This is started by adding water effect on the top of the waterfall, in which I place the water beam. The water beam is fixed until the water effect has dried using pins. ripples or small waves on the water stream is created using a thin layer of water effect. With the water effect in place, use a airflow from like an airbrush to gently move the water effect forward until the desired ripple effect has been achieved. The white foam in the landing area will be achieved using two methods. The first one is to stipple on white acrylic paint. I stipple the white in circles around the landing base, fading the amount of paint on the paintbrush as I move further away. Same method is used around stones in the water stream. Adding another layer of water effect makes the foam effect more three-dimensional. Another way to make it three-dimensional is to add microfibers. These are typically found in pillows. Squeeze out some water effect in the place where you want the foam. Then add the foam and push it in place using a paintbrush. Like this. Add extra water effect on top if you want to reduce the foam effect. Otherwise it's just to shape it around the landing base until you get the desired look. Last action on the water surface on the lower part is to add the water ripples. It's made using the same method as we used on the top part. When the water surface is all prepared and dry, we can start adding the trees. Add scenery glue and some turf to make the roots blend into the ground.
I hope you liked the tutorial. If you did, please help others to find this video by sharing it on your favorite internet forums and giving it a thumbs up. If you got any questions, please post a comment to this video and I'll do my very best to answer it as soon as possible. If this video helps you with your hobby, please remember that this video production is made possible only because a few of you viewers are sponsoring the channel. So if you want to be one of the good guys, get on to Patreon and set up a support account there. Or make a one-off donation in the PayPal link found in the video description below. Please subscribe to the channel and you will get a notification when next video gets published.